Today we're going to be looking underneath a Tesla Model 3. Hello, I'm John from Tesla Gurus. Now, crawling under your car might not be something that you really want to do. Uh, it's not actually that interesting under there. Um, there's not much to see, uh, certainly no exhaust system. And the only time you may have looked under there is when you've had a problem that a few owners have come across. This is where one of the under trays or aero covers has become torn and you see something underneath sort of hanging down and flapping around. You may have seen photos like this on forums, Facebook groups from owners where this has happened and there's been various theories uh, why have, have these covers torn in this way. So when our Model 3 suffered some damage to the front aero cover we decided we'd take a closer look at this and try and figure out what's going on here. We've taken our car to Black Boots. Now they're a tyre and alignment specialist, but they've also been working with us on suspension improvements. And you'll be seeing a lot more of them later on when we do more videos about suspension upgrades and, and other parts that they're helping us with. So the first thing is for Joe to have a quick inspection to see if there's any more damage other than the aero cover. We ran over a bit of debris in the road and luckily we got away with just this cover being slightly torn. Joe's going to start by taking off the front damaged cover. We are going to take both covers off because we want to show you what's underneath them and why they're important to have on the car and keep in one piece. While Joe's doing this, I'd like to show you a service bulletin that came from Tesla, published in 2019, and it's covering early Model 3s built in 2017 and 18. So this doesn't apply to any UK Model 3 because they started delivery in 2019. But what this does tell us is that Tesla probably did have a problem with the first revision of the aero cover. Uh, maybe it just wasn't strong enough and they did have some problems when the cars were driven through standing water uh, and, and damaged these covers. But the important point to note here is that the part that's fitted today is the same part that was specified back in early 19. It's this revision B cover which you'll see even in today's catalogue. So back to Joe and he's pretty much finished now, he's taken off the front and the rear aero cover and what we thought we'd do now is take the car back on the road and just see what it was like without these aero covers fitted. So here we are on the road and the first thing we noticed was an increase in noise generally due to the airflow just not being clean under the car. There was also a kind of vibration throughout the car through the steering um, which was again due to the airflow being interrupted by all the exposed drive units and other parts there. So apart from protecting the drive units and wiring looms from water, mud and debris, these covers have other benefits and you do need to keep them in good condition. Back on the ramp we thought we'd give you a little look at what's underneath the rear cover on one of these. This is the rear drive unit of a Model 3 Performance. There are some other bits on there which are not standard and one of the reasons we were at Black Boots today was to do an upgrade on the suspension so you'll see that in a later episode and you probably even see when we're putting the covers back on there's a few little differences there. Here we've got our new front cover at the top and the existing rear cover below it just before we fit them but we're going to just compare that new front cover with the one that we've taken off. Here's the original cover from a car built around July 2019 and here's the new part we bought from Tesla in the UK around November 2020 and as you can see exactly the same part number exactly the same part. But is this material that these covers are made of just too flimsy in the first place? Well now I've got this old cover let's just see if we can tear it up a bit. You know I'm putting quite a lot of effort into this just trying to rip a piece off and I have to tell you it's not easy. Um, once it's started and there's already a rip or a tear or you've made a cut in it then you can you know you can just about get a bit off but if you had a complete cover there and you tried to tear a corner off with your hands I think you'd find it quite tough so it's a strong material even though it's not made of plastic or metal but I hear you say that's fine when it's dry what happens when you go through a puddle and it gets wet okay so what we're gonna do take a piece that I've torn off or actually I cut it off because it was quite difficult to tear off and we're going to put it in this bucket of water leave it overnight and we're just going to see how much water it absorbs and then just how flimsy it becomes when it's soaking wet. Well I actually forgot about it and uh, didn't leave it overnight I left it there for at least three days and um, got back to it had a little look 
surprisingly it doesn't look much different it's a bit wet on the surface but as you can see it's not really absorbed a lot of water and when I tried to tear it again it's it's really just as difficult the water hasn't made it soggy and I would say it's pretty much as strong as when it was dry uh, I don't really think that just driving through puddles is going to cause this material to rip and and tear but hold on a minute Tesla gurus I can hear you shouting you need to try it for real. Find a puddle, drive the car through it and see what happens. So we did. This is quite a big puddle. We went through this at about 10-15 miles an hour and it caused a bit of a splash but there was absolutely no damage to the under tray at all. Only 15 miles an hour? That's rubbish. Okay then, have a look at this. This is at 40. So after all of that, we've done a lot of testing. We've done a lot of research we've looked at photos we've read threads on forums and we've definitely come to a conclusion that there are probably three main causes of these covers getting torn uh, the bolts holding them up can loosen and fall out uh, that can cause them to drop down and then get damaged they could be damaged by running over hard object uh, curbs or potholes um, and that can lead to them tearing or in really extreme weather, water or snow could get between them and the car and force them down and possibly cause them to tear. But this isn't something that's going to happen driving at 10, 15 miles an hour through a puddle or some standing water. So I would check periodically just to make sure that the covers are in place, there are no tears. And also, if you can, use a mobile phone or a mirror or get under the car just to check those bolts are done up tightly. And to help you with that, Here's a diagram from the Tesla service manual which shows you the location of all the bolts on the front aero cover and here are the bolts on the rear aero cover. And if you do find any of those bolts are missing when you look, uh, you may have to order some new ones from your local service center. And it's interesting to point out that you can see they, they already have thread lock applied to them. So it seems that Tesla have learned about this issue and are doing something about it. Back with Joe and he's now starting to fit our nice new cover to our car. The observant among you may notice there are some yellow parts on the car now where before they were black. This is a little clue as to what we're going to be showing you in a future video. Some upgrades, some performance parts to help your car handle a bit better. Um, that'll be coming up later. Now we've got the covers back in place, let's just go around and see if there are any obvious places where water could get in. There's a tiny, tiny gap there. Uh, as we said, it's, it's possible in extreme circumstances that water could get behind there. And looking at the leading edge of the front cover, we can see that as long as those bolts are done up correctly, there isn't any way that water can get between the cover and the car there either. It's actually been designed so that there's a little lip and the water would just flow over it. So it looks to us that as long as these are properly fitted and bolted up, um, you don't have to worry too much about going out in the rain in your Model 3. But we would still like to hear from you. If you can tell us in the comments, have you had any problems like this with your car? Uh, did you find out why it happened? Did Tesla repair it under warranty or did you have to pay for it yourself? Just let us know. It'd be very interesting to find out. And also any other suggestions you have for future episodes of Tesla Gurus. We're looking for ideas all the time. So please comment, please subscribe. And we'll see you next time on Tesla Gurus.